Hi everyone, and welcome. Today we're going to talk about cloud native databases and storage for game development. In particular, we'll cover Cloud Spanner and our latest open source project, OpenSaves. Before we get started, let's do a quick round of introductions. My name is Mike Nadal, and I'm a gaming data architect here at Google Cloud. Hi, I'm Emma Iwao, developer advocate for Google Cloud. We're going to start off with a dive into Cloud Spanner, our fully managed database service that combines the benefits of relational database structure with non-relational horizontal scale and touch on some of the basics of how it can help with building the next generation of video games. First, let's start with an understanding of the current game industry. Whether you're building AAA games or the next viral mobile game, the player base has come to expect a certain level of quality and feature sets in the games that they play. It could be the size and detail of the world they're playing in or the innovative gameplay, but the point is complexity in game design is increasing exponentially. And with that increase in complexity comes the need for databases that can be flexible enough and reliable enough to meet those demands. Layer on top of that, the need for those players' experiences to feel quick and snappy with low latency and have a consistent experience across different platforms and regions, well, that's when you start to get a sense of the challenges that modern day game developers are facing. Now, if we dive a little bit deeper and take a look at these problems from a more operational perspective, we usually see three main challenges when it comes to launching and running games. The first and hardest to predict is system failure due to the success of the game. Every developer's dream is essentially launching their game and seeing it become an overnight success. But the nightmare kicks in when players that are eager to try your game are stuck in queues or can't connect to the servers at all. Typically, the solution here is to shard your databases to meet the demand, but sharding introduces its own complexities. What you gain in performance or scale, you pay for in design complexity and database management. It's much harder to account for these types of hidden costs since things like design complexity essentially get worked into developer salaries rather than having an explicit bill at the end of the month for database usage. Especially when you're trying to get a new game off the ground, creating a reliable and transparent relationship with your players can really pay dividends down the road, and it all starts with being able to rely on the technology that you're using. With all of that in mind, we have a product in Cloud Spanner that can help with all of those issues. It's our enterprise-grade, globally distributed, and perhaps most importantly, strongly consistent managed database. This type of versatility means you can use Spanner as your primary backend database for things like game state, inventory data, or even player authentication. These are all use cases typically covered by relational databases, but as we already know, scaling those databases up and down can prove to be quite challenging. Spanner being a fully managed database means adding nodes to your instance is as simple as clicking in a UI. Oh, and the scaling happens in place, so you don't even have to worry about things like downtime. Reducing the need to monitor and react to scale can reduce the operational overhead and hidden costs that we discussed earlier, which can allow you to reallocate your team's resources to thinking about and developing new features for the game while worrying less about keeping the actual game running. Because Spanner is purpose-built for transactional consistency, it's great for capturing player interactions as they happen, no matter how complex that scenario. The best part is that you can completely eliminate the complexities of sharding. Instead, what Spanner does is that it automatically divides your data into what are called splits, which can live on different servers. And the cool thing about this is that even though your data is spread across multiple servers, Spanner still operates as one database, so you can simultaneously scale and avoid issues like hotspotting. Now that we know a bit more about Spanner as a product, how do we know when Spanner is the right database to fit your use case? I'm a strong proponent of the idea that the tools you use dictate the way you choose to solve a problem. If I want to solve a math problem, for instance, I can probably get away with using pen and paper for basic arithmetic. If I have to solve something like 2,439 times 41, I can get it done with pen and paper, but it's a daunting task. If I have a calculator handy though, it's not even a second thought. I just plug in the numbers and hit go, and I'm now thinking less about how much I don't want to write out multiples, and more about what are the new, more difficult problems I can tackle with the calculator. In the same way, Spanner is a good fit for any of these four needs. Earlier, we mentioned Spanner as a good fit for inventory data management. I like to imagine a scenario where a player in Japan trades items with a player in the States. Right now, you probably have to do something like have that player sign out of their home region, 
sign into the region that they want to make the trade in and then have that player sign out go back to their home region and then you would have to account for that trade in both places you could also get this done using a geographically sharded database but that requires you to instantiate transaction locks to avoid issues like item duplication which impacts not only database performance but also your player experience these types of scenarios have led developers to either avoid things like trading completely or painstakingly attempt to implement them. Spanner, however, solves this problem by providing something that we call serializability, which means that all transactions appear as if they executed in a serial order, even if some of the reads, writes, or other operations actually occurred in parallel. Using serialized transactions allows you to create what we call external consistency, which means that transactions commit in an order that is based on their commit timestamps and these commit timestamps reflect real time, so you can compare them to the time you see on your watch. This happens no matter how many nodes you add to an instance to meet scaling demands. Now, all the logic that you had to put into place in order to provide cross-regional trading is something that's just purpose-built into the operational patterns of Spanner. It's the calculator that's handling the mundane so you can get to the excitement. Another good example is using Spanner for auth databases in charge of things like character sign-in. Spanner is especially handy if you want to standardize on a single type of database at your studio or even at the publisher level to handle this type of operation. Now you're probably thinking that auth databases don't need the scalability of Spanner since their function is fairly straightforward. You wouldn't use a calculator to do one plus one, right? However, this use case is less about scaling and more about taking advantage of the transactional guarantees and high data availability that Spanner can provide. Spanner can operate at up to five nines of availability and data replication is transparent, synchronous, and built in, which makes it a good choice for the critical authentication path required when players sign in. With our newest offering, you can actually spin up smaller instances of Spanner at just a tenth of the cost, so you don't feel like you're overpaying for solving simpler use cases like the auth one we just discussed. One last thing I'll mention here, you can actually use our local Spanner emulator and test out how it would feel to use Spanner to solve a lot of these use cases for free. We've talked about scaling pretty extensively. One click to scale up or down and you're done. Now let's chat about minimizing downtime a bit more. Modern day games are constantly evolving, adding in a new game mode or new weapon types or different player abilities, which is great for players, but this usually translates into updating the database schema, which means downtime. With Spanner, you can actually make schema updates with no downtime. You can do things like create and drop tables, add, alter, or drop columns, all with, again, zero downtime. Now, the way Spanner achieves this is by maintaining the older schema versions to support reads while the schema update is processed. Other operational concerns like patches and security updates are also handled automatically, so it's just one less scenario where you need to bring your database down to improve your game. We also touched briefly on reliability, but let's talk a bit more about the different configurations. Spanner can actually operate in either regional or multi-regional configurations. In regional configurations, Spanner has three read-write replicas, each in their own availability zone, containing a full copy of your data. This configuration offers four nines of availability, while a multi-regional configuration has two read-write regions, each of which contains two read-write replicas, offering five nines of availability. This setup allows your game to survive even a regional outage, ensuring business continuity and disaster recovery are all taken care of. Whether you're picking regional or multi-regional can really depend on things like, what are your cost constraints? What are your latency requirements? And are there any regional data governance needs that you need to keep in mind? Of course, none of this would be possible without Google Cloud's very own global fiber optic network. This is the backbone of multiple Google Cloud products and is part of the secret sauce that goes into creating such unique and powerful databases like Spanner. As this network improves, more undersea cables are added and more regions pop up, you can expect to see improvements in things like latency and reliability in Spanner. To wrap it up, we should talk about how Niantic is a fantastic example of taking all the benefits of Cloud Spanner that we mentioned and using them to run multiple components of their hit game, Pokemon Go. Their original database solution was actually hosted in Cloud Data Store, our managed NoSQL database. 
For the scale they were planning to operate at, Datasaur was going to be a great solution, but as the game launched and evolved, they found that they were going to not only need more scale, but more features like external consistency over eventual consistency, and being able to perform SQL operations like joining and aggregating. Once they successfully migrated, they found a home in Cloud Spanner which saw operational cost reductions of 50%, allowing them to reinvest those cost savings into other game features like account linking and friends lists. Not to mention that on average, they measured 25% better latency. They gave a great talk at our next convention on how to migrate into Spanner from an existing database and the decision-making process that goes on behind the scenes. I would definitely recommend giving that a watch. Now, as much as I'd love to convince you that Spanner can solve each and every database problem that you could possibly have as a game developer, it's simply not the case. In this next section, Emma will talk to you about open saves and how it can fill in the other gaps for any other database needs that you may have. Take it away, Emma. Thank you, Mike. So you have Cloud Spanner for database, but you also need a storage solution to develop games and I'd like to introduce OpenSaves today. OpenSaves is a purpose-built single interface for game development, and we design it with three principles in mind. The first is simplicity. We provide a unified, well-defined gRPC endpoint for all operations, and you only need to import the gRPC plotbuff file to generate bindings for various programming languages, such as C++, Rust, Go and Java. The second is speed. It optimizes data placements based on size, access frequency, and user-provided performance hints. The third is scalability. It runs on Google Kubernetes Engine and Cloud Run, and scales from zero to hundreds of servers in just minutes. We developed OpenSafe in partnership with 2K and we made sure that OpenSaves is easy and robust for real-world game applications. This is the architecture of OpenSaves. You have the program in the blue box in the middle and the game service on the left. The game service can access OpenSaves either directly or through a global load balancer for multi-location deployments. OpenSaves uses Cloud Memory Store as a high-speed cache to store and return frequently accessed data. It uses Cloud Data Store as a place to store structured data and metadata. And structured data here means anything that's indexable and searchable, such as Boolean, integer, and string values. It uses Cloud Storage to store anything that's bigger than a few kilobytes. We designed open saves with extensibility in mind as well and you can build various applications using the same API. For example, you can build a leaderboard by combining structured metadata and basic arithmetic operations API. You can also store medium-sized data in open saves, such as replay data and user-generated content. And you can add metadata to later search your data. You can also use open saves to store even bigger data such as game patches and assets. And we offer chunked uploads and downloads API to let the client resume uploads and downloads anytime. We offer user-defined keys and tag support, so you can use the same keys that you use to manage data in your game. There you have it. We have a dedicated guide to use Cloud Spanner for game development, and it covers various topics from schema design to performance optimizations. OpenSaves is an open source solution, so we have a GitHub repository as a place for development and discussion. We also welcome feedback and external contributions there. If you want to try these solutions, be sure to check these links out. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for tuning into our session, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your time here at Google for Games Developer Conference.